forgive the <laughs> extended sidebar. I'm going to punt to you to make the motion. <laughs> okay, so um, in, in conferring with uh, uh, the chairwoman, um, we recognize that uh, this is a significant issue. And we certainly learn with, with, with Medi-Cal, if we don't have fees that are commensurate with <clears throat> providers willing to take those fees, that you don't have providers that are willing to provide the service. We've seen that certainly with physicians. This is a dramatic impact on, on, on pharmacies when you're talking about a 32% decrease uh, in, in, the, in the cost of, of Medi-Cal drugs. It's gonna be a horrific uh, impact. And so this is our, our last uh, hearing today on, on this. And so the only logical way that we can get this still addressed is through a conference committee. So uh, an appropriate motion would be to, to move this with the addition of one million dollars to get the discussion going, is that correct? Uh, so that we can get it into conference and this will buy us more time to solve this problem in the upcoming uh, budget discussions. So um, if my colleagues uh, agree, I would be happy to make that uh, a motion. I do, and if I could just add to that. So the full motion is we're approving and adopting placeholder trailer bill language that, that's reflected in the first paragraph under uh, the agenda, page 54 also acknowledging that we are um, approving $1 million supplement to the dispensing fees. To open discussions at a uh, conference and this will give us more time to, uh, to work to get the entire cost uh, to, to get to an effective $3.56 increase in the dispensing fee until this year is over with, we can get the survey back. And that's $1 million general fund. And I'm sure finance is about to say you don't support that. <laughs> Laura Ayala with the Department of Finance. Finance is opposed to the proposed amendment because it's not consistent with the governor's May revision plan. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, please call the roll. Mitchell. Aye. Monning. Aye. Stone. Aye. Thank you very much. That's out with a three to zero vote. Moving on to issue six, managed care fine and penalty revenue to Medi-Cal. Yes, so we are proposing trailer bill that would uh, shift money in this fund to generally support the Medi-Cal program given the significant decline in the Mr. MIP enrollment because of the ACA. We feel it's prudent to use these funds for Medi-Cal generally. We believe there will be sufficient funding for Mr. MIP given that we still have the reconciliations for prior years that are occurring that will result in recoupments from the plans and that would be the funding for Mr. MIP in the budget year. Questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, LAO, finance. Sergio Aguilar, Department of Finance. We understand the concerns raised in the staff recommendation and we are committed to working with the committee on this proposal. Thank you, public comment. Linda Way with Western Center on Law and Poverty. First of all, my apologies for not sharing this with the staff before the hearing. Uh, we do oppose the trailer bill language, but do support the staff recommendation to ensure that there are sufficient funds in the Mr. Mitt program. We do, however, have concern that the existing funds would be redirected, health care fine funds would be redirected to backfill the general fund. There was a section 93 work group that met in 2014 that discussed the very issue of what to do with uh, remaining funds considering the, the dwindling Mr. Mitt um, enrollment numbers, and this was not agreed upon by stakeholders and so uh, this is a policy change and we, we don't believe it should be done through trailer bill language. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members. Tam Ma with Health Access California. Uh, we also have concerns about the proposed trailer bill language, and we w do want to ensure that there are sufficient resources uh, for this safety net program because a lot of the individuals that are in Mr. Mip, although few in number, they are individuals who are disabled and under the age of 55 on Medicare, so that um, the Mr. Mip program functionally uh, 
you know, it functions as a, a Medigap um, policy for these individuals, and we think it's premature at this point to shift any, you know, any funds into the general Medi-Cal program, and would like to have on, um, continue conversations with the administration on this. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, I'll entertain um, a motion. I'm going to modify uh, the motion that we a reject the trailer bill language, and b that we redirect two million dollars from the um, Mr. Mep fund balance to support the Medi-Cal program. So moved. Thank you. I said it in this oh. morning. I don't know. Call the roll, please. Uh, Mitchell? Aye. Morning. Aye. Stone? That's out with a 2-0 vote. Moving on to issue seven, long-term care quality assurance fund. Sure, so we are pr proposing trailer bill to make this special fund continuously appropriated to ensure that all the available funding in the fund is used for the purposes of the program. Today it's subject to appropriation and given that it's based on estimates, we end up in situations like this year where the estimate for the appropriation last year ended up being too low and therefore there was additional funding that we could have used. Uh, that can't be used without a su supplemental appropriation. This proposal would align with other special funds created for these types of taxes, such as the MCO tax, which are, are already continuously appropriated. In terms of the current year shortfall, it really is, it's because we have to make an estimate at the time of the appropriation, what the cash that we collect comes in. You know, we, we always say our estimates are ac accurate, that's the actuals that are the problem. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, so, that's, <laughs> so that, that's the issue there. Um, and so it will require a supplemental appropriation to be able to use that this year. And then hopefully um, if this proposal goes through, we would be able to have it continuously appropriated going forward. Uh, then the final question about the additional add-ons for the long-term care rates. Uh, what happened here is really we got this information too late in our process for the, the May revise and the development of that to do a complete analysis of the request from the association. And so we're currently working through that analysis now to determine whether there would be other add-ons that would be necessary. Questions of colleagues? Uh, LAO? Finance? Mm -hmm. Public comment. Jennifer Snyder on behalf of the California Association of Health Facilities. Uh, we are supportive of uh, the trailer bill language that the department has uh, relative to the fund and the continuous appropriations of the fund. Um, our, our concern with relative to the rate setting process and to um, the monies that, that create that fund is that the department is required to work with industry, with um, skilled nursing facilities to appropriately reimburse them under the Medi-Cal program for new costs. Um, and there's three new costs that are um, coming up here in 2016, 2017. Uh, one that's the most expensive is the change in the minimum wage. Um, and that's gonna be a 50%, 50 cent increase starting in January 2016, 2017. And then we're gonna see exponential, of course, increases to that. We are um, supportive to the extent that, um, that uh, we see our employees see, um, increasing their salaries, their wages. Um, our, our concern overall is, is that those, um, that the department currently is looking at uh, supporting Medi-Cal costs related to only those employees that are receiving minimum wage increases, not those employees that are close and around the minimum wage. And many of our certified nursing facilities, assistants in particular, both in skilled nursing facilities and in inter immediate care facilities for developmentally disabled, those CNAs actually are really close to the minimum wage but aren't at the minimum wage. So if you start increasing the minimum wage pretty quickly over the next year, two years, those, um, those CNAs will be impacted by that. It's a good thing that their wages are gonna go up, um, but we are concerned that Medi-Cal is not gonna recognize those costs, and we really believe that those costs need to be recognized. Um, and then the other two add-ons, uh, we appreciate the, de the department recognizing that we still need to work on those, um, on those costs related to antimicrobial stewardship and um, related to staffing reporting. It's a federal requirement that now uh, skilled nursing facilities in particular have to, have to address. So our biggest concern is the minimum wage. Um, they are estimating a $7 million cost to that. We think it's exponentially more than that. Uh, we really hope to work with them on it, but um, that is our largest concern is that Medi-Cal won't don't support skilled nursing facilities and ICFs in their effort to make sure all of their employees move up. And that's, I think, the most important. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. 
<clears throat> I'll entertain a motion to adopt uh, placeholder trailer bill language. It's been moved. Please call the roll. Mitchell? Aye. Monning? Aye. Stone? Aye. Thank you. That's out with a 3-0 vote. Issue 8. Sure. Institutionally deemed behavior health treatment population case management. So with the transition of BHT services to a state plan benefit out of the DD waiver, there is a small population of children, we think about 433, who will no longer be eligible for Medi-Cal because their family income is, is over the uh, regular standards that is used to determine Medi-Cal eligibility. They had been eligible under the DD waiver using institutionally deemed rules, which only looks at the child's income, which is Zero. So, um, but now that it, that's no longer a waiver benefit, it, it's a state plan benefit, there's no longer that, that eligibility. So if they were only on the waiver for BHT, they would no longer fall under the institutionally deemed uh, eligibility group and therefore no longer eligible for Medi-Cal. Were these children, uh, would they have qualified under our old Healthy Families program rule or based on their income, they would have qualified, wouldn't have qualified? That's right. They're above family. any okay. of the, yes, because right. otherwise they would just move into to regular right. Medi-Cal. Okay. So uh, the, the occurrence of them uh, having to move off the waiver will be March of next year. And so in order to you know, do the best that we can in, in hopes of transitioning these children to full scope comprehensive coverage that might be available to them, we're proposing trailer bill and budget uh, amounts for us to work with an external contractor to help with do outreach education and enrollment assistance to help them figure out what other coverage options are available to them. And those other coverage options will include behavioral health services? Right, so since it's a required uh, service in all health plans in, in California, whether it's through Covered California or employer-sponsored coverage, they should still have access to those services. Right. Questions from members? LAO, finance, public comment. Linda Way with Western Center on Law and Poverty. We support the staff recommendation and appreciate that department proactively ensuring that these children keep their coverage as well as look forward to continuing to work with the department on BHT service delays. Thanks. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to approve and adopt placeholder trailer bill language. Call the roll. Mitchell. Aye. Aye. Stone. Thank you. That's out with a three to zero vote. Issue nine, new qualified immigrant affordability and benefit program. Sure, so first, as noted earlier, just want to flag that we have delayed the implementation of the RAP from this January to the January 2018, so the budget reflects the reduced general fund savings uh, for that. Um, in addition, we are proposing trailer bill to correct an issue that we have identified with the program. So the intent is to address an issue because the way that Medi-Cal calculates income is different than how income is calculated by Covered California for the purpose of subsidized coverage. So uh, when the NQI wrap was envisioned, it was assumed that individuals who qualify for Medi-Cal, so that means they're under 138% of the poverty limit, would qualify for the largest subsidies and cost sharing reductions in Covered California because that's at 150% of FPL. However, Given now, as we've been looking at this, given the way that we calculate income differently between the two programs, it's actually possible for someone under our rules to be at 138% of poverty, but under Covered California, they could be 200, 300, 400%. It really, it could, could vary that significantly. And that's due to the fact that we calculate it based on the current month. So if someone had lost their job, their income could be very low, but for the last year, they could have had a job that put them over those income levels. So the proposed trailer bill is really keeping in line with the original intent, which would be we would limit it, limit people who would move from full scope Medi-Cal into the RAP to, the, for, to that population under 150% of FPL according to Covered California's rules so that they qualify for the full cost sharing and, and subsidies. And so the plans that we're creating for them in Covered California would just be those, those plans with that full subsidies and, and cost sharing. So it's a little confusing and a little complicated, but it's, it's really to, to keep that uh, the original intent so that we're really just moving those folks who will f qualify for those full subsidies. Everyone else will just m re would stay in Medi-Cal full scope coverage. Questions, colleagues? LAO. Finance? Guadalupe Manriquez with the Department of Finance. Um, we oppose the staff recommendation to reject the proposed trailer bill language that is, is not consistent with the governor's May revision plan. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, public comment, please. Kimberly Chen with the California Pan-Ethnic Health Network. I uh, want to appreciate the inclusion of this item in the May revision. Um, and we want to support the staff recommendation to delay uh, the NQI RAP program and to reject the trailer bill language. We do have a number of concerns about uh, the policy changes that this proposal um, is, is um, putting forward and um, those conversations are uh, more appropriate in policy. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you, next witness. Tam Ma with Health Access California. We also support the staff recommendation to adopt the delay but reject the other policy changes. Um, you know, there are many other policy concerns that we have with the NQI RAP program, and we'd like to be able to discuss and consider them all together rather than doing this piecemeal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next witness. Linda Way with Western Center on Law and Poverty would like to also echo that we support the staff recommendation that um, supports the delay but reject the trailer bill language, particularly it, um, because of the, the policy changes that are proposed. would like to point out in Ms. Cantwell's uh, testimony in regards to the 150% FPL, there are still some remaining questions regarding that if, for instance, an individual loses his or her job, applies for Medi-Cal, doesn't include in that application the, the, the income from the previous, how is that 150% FPL included? So that's just to give an indication of all these policy questions that still remain and, and therefore um, would uh, recommend rejecting the trailer bill language. Thank you very much. Seeing no further public comment, I'll entertain a, mo entertain a motion to approve the May revised proposal to delay the NQI wrap and to reject the proposed trailer bill language. So Call the roll, please. Mitchell. Aye. Monty. Aye. Stone. Thank you. That's a two, it's out with a two to one vote. Issue number 10, Emergency Medical Air Transportation Act cleanup. I'm deferring this to my Department of Finance colleagues, so just they need to give them a chance to sit down. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair and Senators. Scott goes with the Department of Finance. Uh, last year, the administration supported the renewal of this penalty assessment uh, to fund supplemental reimbursement for air ambulance providers, uh, and SB 326 uh, by Senator Bell was signed into law. Uh, however, language was inserted into the bill late in the process that could be construed uh, to require the department to fund the program with general fund once the penalty assessment expires in 2018. Uh, the language submitted a may revision would strike the language to alleviate this potential uh, general fund pressure. Uh, we have been discussing this matter with the Assembly Appropriations Committee staff, which was the entity that uh, inserted this language into the bill last year, uh, as well as the staff of this committee and its counterpart in the Assembly, uh, on, and we've been uh, providing technical assistance on modified uh, language and um, hope to continue that process as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Public comment. Catherine Austin Scott with the Air Ambulance Providers. We are also working with the Appropriations Committee and Administration. Um, we committed to working on this last year as it went through um, based on the uh, DHCS's and Department of Finance's concerns. Um, so are supportive of addressing uh, finance's concerns while still allowing appropriations to gain the information they'd like to have as the bill, as we reintroduce the bill next year to continue the penalty, is, that's our intent. So. Thank you very much. Um, I'll entertain a motion um, that we modify the language and then accept it as follows. The department shall, by March 1st, 2017, in coordination with the Department of Finance, notify the legislature on the fiscal impact to Medi-Cal of and the planned reimbursement methodology um, for emergency medical air transportation services after the termination of penalty assessments pursuant to subdivision F of section 76,000 of the government code on January 1, 2018. We have a motion, please call the roll. Mitchell. Aye. Monning. Aye. Stone. Aye. Thank you, that's out with a three to zero vote. Issue number 11, drug Medi-Cal rate setting process. Good afternoon, this is Karen Baylor, Department of Healthcare Services. Um, 
Currently, the Department of Healthcare Services sets the drug Medi-Cal rates through regulation. We are requesting trailer bill language in order to do this, not through regulation, but through um, bulletin authority. This will provide some efficiencies with administration. We are not recommending any changes to the methodology, just that instead of doing it through regulations, that we're able to do it through uh, bulletin authority. Any questions from colleagues? LAO? Finance? Any public comment? Uh, I will entertain a motion to reject uh, the May revised proposal. It has no budget implications and consequently it's recommended to reject this proposal. So Call the roll please. Mitchell? Aye. Monning? Aye. Stone? Thank you. That's out with a three to zero vote. Issue 12, Continuum of Care. The Continuum of Care reform is something that we've been working very closely with our sister agency, the Department of Social Services on. Um, we are rec uh, requesting uh, some general fund support for three particular items. One is for county mental health staff to participate in the child and family teams that happen on the local level. And the child and family teams is where the discussions are uh, regarding what is the best treatment, placement uh, for the child, also for uh, clinical assessment conducted by the um, county mental health staff and then for training in order to train uh, county mental health staff on the uh, implementation of CCR. Any questions, colleagues? We had an extensive conversation yesterday on the level of care and, and talked about you in your absence. Uh, LAO, finance, any public comment? Move the motion. Thank you. It's been moved that we approve uh, the County Behavioral Health Director's, um, excuse me, that we approve the request. Call the roll. Mitchell? Aye. Monning? Aye. Stone? Thank you. It's out three to zero. You're welcome. Issue 13, Medi-Cal PACE Modernization. Sure, so we had a release trailer bill in January that we discussed at the last committee hearing I was at. Uh, we did release with the May revise changes to that proposed trailer bill. Uh, those were based on proposed amendments we received from the PACE organizations uh, as we tried to incorporate many of the things that they asked for. Certainly we did, I, I will acknowledge we did not take all of their changes. Uh, the changes don't reflect any specific change in how the department would have otherwise approached the rate setting components, but provided additional detail in the statute that was important to the PACE organizations themselves. These changes include things like acknowledging in the statute that PACE is different than other managed care models, uh, noting that we need to account for the cost of, uh, of high cost drugs, uh, language around the requirement to calculate an upper payment limit as required under federal PACE regulations, and uh, noting the additional flexibility for the department to pay above the lower bound of the rate range for either new organizations or existing organizations moving into new service areas. Thank you. We heard this uh, issue on our May 5th hearing. LAO, finance, colleagues, public comment. Red Main representing CalPACE, the trade association for the 11 PACE organizations. First, we would like to acknowledge the uh, work that DHCS has uh, uh, engaged in with the PACE programs and as uh, Ms. Cantwell uh, indicated, there have been a number of changes to the trailer bill language that are helpful. We're probably six words away maybe, <laughs> if I could just uh, briefly say on the um, calculation of the upper payment limit, uh, we would like to see some requirement that the department um, shall uh, adjust data to make sure that uh, um, the upper payment limit is uh, appropriately calculated. Uh, right now it uh, allows them to do that. Uh, second, in the, as, as uh, I think the department has acknowledged, the new rate setting methodology is unknown for both sides uh, of the, uh, of the uh, equation and the authority that's in the bill right now um, allows the uh, department to uh, pay in the, uh, um, rate ranges to mitigate the impact on the transition. We think that the language should say shall uh, pay in the upper uh, rate ranges to mitigate uh, the transition. And then likewise in the uh, 
a new uh, program where uh, the information doesn't really exist. Also, it uh, should be a mandate to the department that they shall uh, pay uh, upper rate ranges to mitigate the impact on uh, new and uh, startup programs. I think with uh, those, we're very close, but um, understand the uh, recommendation to move the um, trailer bill as placeholder language. Thank you. Thank you very much. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the May revised placeholder trailer bill language. Call the roll, please. Mitchell? Aye. Monning? Aye. Stone? Aye. Thank you. That's out three to zero. Ms. Cantwell, our final issue today, issue 14, our budget control section. Sure. So explaining it, I will defer to finance for that, but I'll answer the second question um, in terms of why the estimates are lower than what we uh Projected originally, again, it's always the actual set of the problem, not the estimates. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the reality is the AB85 formula is complicated. Uh, there's a lot of moving pieces. Uh, and so when we now have the actual data for 1314 uh, on the costs and the revenues to the county public hospital systems, this is, this is what resulted. And so it's a, all of those moving pieces that really reflect the fact that yeah. it's, it's complicated. <laughs> all right, finance. Jacob Lamb, Department of Finance. The administration request control section 4.13 be added to the budget bill in order to allow the administration to repay counties based on the AB85 final reconciliation payments. Any questions from members? You, you got that, Monty? Oh, yeah. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a test on it shortly. LAO, any public comment, please? All right, thank you. It's so moved and been seconded that we adopt placeholder budget bill language. Please call the roll. Mitchell. Aye. Aye. Stone. That's out with a three to zero vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, members, thank you. for your attention and patience today. And sub three stands adjourned. Thank you, Jeff.